Raise your hand if you have ever felt alone in a situation. Everywhere you turn for a solution is pitch black. Nobody, no one to shine even a little light to show the way out. But as you have been hearing, Jesus came and he showed the way. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for today. We thank you that your mercies are new every morning. And Lord, as we reflect on your death, may we never forget that you did it for us. And Lord, as we search again and hear your utterances, I ask you, Father, to hide me behind that cross so that your word in its truth, O oh Father, will go out and accomplish that which you have purpose. We bless your name. Amen. Good morning, Covenant City Church, all the people out there in media land. It's good for us to be here again, reflecting on this special Good Friday, on the crucifixion and the benefits of the cross. The Bible says in Matthew 27, verse 45, from the NIV version, from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness cover all the land. I submit to you, it was pitch black for three hours. During those three hours, the weight of the sins of the whole world came down on Jesus. According to Galatians chapter 5, from verse 19 to verse 21, there was sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, that is excessive indulgence in sex, alcohol and drugs, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, darkness, drunkenness, Orgies. I saw a video the other day, and man, this scene would turn your stomach. Orgies and the like. Some of the like that the scripture talks about is sickness and disease, like the testing torrid coronavirus pandemic and its ravaging impact. When you think of all of these things, that was darkness personified. Based on Isaiah 53, Jesus descended into Hades and he assumed the human nature, that which was described above, the sexual immorality and the witchcraft, and our sinful destiny, brethren, was death. For the three hours that Jesus confronted all these transgressions and more, he felt that God, his Father, with whom he was one, had abandoned him. But God could not countenance sin. The sin was so terrible that God had to turn his face away. Jesus went down into Hades alone. God turned his back and allowed him alone to bear our sorrow and shame. And as the line in the song says, he carried the weight of the world on his shoulders. 
And in Jamaican parlance, we would say, and when the pain lick him, and he buckled under the weight of the burden of your sin and mine. Matthew 27, verse 46 tells us, about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Under the grief and sorrow, he lamented on the abandonment of his father. Do you believe that this is the same father whom the Jews were, when the Jews were persecuting Jesus and telling him that not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father and making himself with, equal with God. Jesus responded confidently in John chapter 5, verse 19 and verse 20. It said, Jesus gave this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than those so that you will be amazed. So how could he, the father, forsake the son whom he loved? And let us be reminded in Hebrews 13 verse 5, where God says, yes, this is the father speaking, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. That's for you, Ansel. That's for you, Jean. That's for all of you out there in radio land, in TV land, wherever you're hearing. Again, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, are the words, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you. Pass the car. He will never forsake you. Brethren, friends, I believe that as Jesus endured those three hours of darkness in squalor, scorn, and shame, he remembered those, days of, those words of the days of old. When his father, God, told Moses to let the Israelites know that they should be strong. That they should be courageous. They should not be afraid or be terrified because of their enemies. For the Lord their God would go with, him, with them. He said he would never leave them nor forsake them. So I remember that. I believe that Jesus remembered that too. And it was the ninth hour. In Luke chapter 23 verse 46. It tells us. Jesus called out with a loud voice. Father. Into your hands, I commit my spirit. When he had said that, he breathed his last. Jesus cried out and yielded to his father. He was delivered from Hades. His relationship with his father was restored. And the loneliness... Let's not forget that he was lonely. That loneliness that he felt, that was the path 
to accomplishing God's purpose. And God's purpose was brethren for us to experience new life and for us to be able to have and establish a right relationship with Jesus Christ, Jesus' Father, God. So, on this Good Friday, as we reflect and as we consider the cross where God sacrificed his son for each of us, that son who felt that his father had forsaken him, because his father could not countenance our dark deeds. I ask you, are we going to waste that act of plundering hell and Hades? A friend of mine told me that he grew up hearing his mother say, can Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? And I'm reminded of a story which I want to read for you. The story of John Griffin who controlled a railway drawbridge over the Mississippi River. He took his young son to work with him one day. After putting the massive drawbridge up, Griffin was eating lunch when suddenly he heard the whistle of the Memphis Express roaring toward the crossing. Leaping from the observation deck, he ran to throw the control switch. Glancing down, his heart stopped. His son had fallen into the gears, trapping his legs in the cogs. Desperately, he tried to devise a rescue plan but there was no time. His son was down there. But there were 400 passengers on the train. Griffin knew what he had to do. Burying his face in his arm, he pushed the master switch just in time to lower the bridge into place as the train thundered across. Then raising his head, he looked into the passing windows with tear-filled eyes. There were businessmen casually reading the newspaper, ladies sipping coffee, and the children eating ice cream. Nobody even looked at the control house or glanced down at the great gearbox in agony just like Jesus Griffin cried out I sacrificed my son for you people don't you care but as the train rushed by nobody heard the anguished father's words Again, I say to you, on this Good Friday, as we consider the cross where God sacrificed his son for each of us, where the son felt abandoned, where the son had to yield, are we going to waste the crucifixion of Christ? The ultimate question is asked in Matthew 7, I'm sorry, Matthew 27, verse 22. And the question is, what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? I posit that the one right answer to that question is, Today, I accept you, Jesus, as my Savior and as my Lord. 
Won't you do that today?